Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. Okay, fellow black Americans, I want to talk a little bit today about the problem with airing dirty laundry in public. And when I say dirty laundry, I'm talking about things that we want to talk about among ourselves. We're not trying to include everybody else. We might just be talking amongst ourselves about problems that we have in our community. What we have to understand is that everybody is listening. Now, we may not be listening to what they're saying. And for young African Americans, you might be on TikTok listening to what everybody else is saying. But basically, we are an insulated community because we've been over here with white people for all of these years with basically no other black people over here, no social media. So we've just been among ourselves, talking about things among ourselves, working out things among ourselves, and just being ourselves. So now we think we can continue to do that, but we've got all of these immigrants coming over here, especially all these folk coming from Africa. And it becomes problematic when they start meddling into black Americans' business and trying to show some kind of distinction between them and us and trying to use that distinction to say that they have what? A genetic advantage. Now let me tell you why I said that. This woman on the screen is Somali. Somalis are mixed with Arabs. So they are just like black Americans and any other group of people that's been mixed with another race of people, especially lighter skinned people, white people, Arabs, Asians, so forth. So many of them have a different hair texture than we have. So Somalis, and they have ruined Minnesota, by the way. We used to never hear anything about Minnesota. Now all of a sudden you hear something about Minnesota all the time. And because they went up there and upset the ecosystem in Minnesota, so now we hear something about Minnesota all the time. But back to the point. Somalis are in Minnesota and other places. And Somalis are setting up businesses. Just like the Asians. Now let me just say this. When the Asians have a beauty supply store in the black community. They have beauty supplies in their stores that suit us. Whether it's clothes, hats, shoes, pocketbooks, wigs, weave, and every kind of hair product that you can name from 1A to 4C. The reason these Asian beauty supply stores have been so successful in black neighborhoods is because they give us what we like. They give us what we want. They give you the whole church lady outfit. They give you weaves and wigs in every color and every shape and every length. They give you what you want. They don't say business destroying things like, oh, well, we shouldn't be selling these black women 4C hair products because our hair is 3A. That's stupid. That is a stupid premise if you're going to sell products to people who have 4C hair. You're not concerned about your hair type. If you want to sell it to them, you sell the products that suit their hair type. Lately, black people have had a falling out with the Asians and don't want to patronize their stores anymore. So the East Africans, including Somalis, are trying to step in and get that robust black women's hair care business. There is nothing wrong with that. That's a very good business decision. But then you have a heifer like this one on the screen. She went and made a whole video about black people's hair versus Somali's hair and how our hair gets dry and breaks and she's right. And then she went on to say that East Africans, Somalis, I guess, and Ethiopians, whoever the hell she was talking about, shouldn't be selling products 
to black American women because our hair is so different from theirs. What kind of idiotic statement is that? If people were selling based on their own preference, nobody would make any money selling anything. And she only did that because she thinks that her hair is genetically superior. Imagine a person thinking that hair makes them superior to somebody else. And that is the reason why Somalia is in the state that it's in because it's filled with stupid people just like her. And I don't want to get in on ragging on Somalis and all of that, but Somalia is a failed state. All of them are here because their state failed. Now, if they had any kind of genetic advantage, they should be trying to use that genetic advantage to make their homeland livable so they can stay there. Having your hair as a genetic advantage is just plain stupid. But the problem is, and the reason somebody like this can make a video like that, is that our hair has been in the spotlight. We've had to go to the United States Congress to be able to wear our natural hair. So that is why we talk about it and we complain about it. That doesn't mean we hate our hair. I don't think that. It means that we've got to do something unnatural to our natural hair to make it palatable to white people. So that's why we talk about it. But then other people are eavesdropping because they have a different texture of hair. So they kind of use their hair to prop themselves up on a pedestal. But even with this woman's hair, I wouldn't be surprised and would be willing to bet a small amount of money that this is either a weave or a perm on her head. Because typically, their hair is not that straight. They have a looser curl, but it's not that straight. Now, it might be her hair, but I would, I would be willing to bet that it's not. They wear their hair covered, but when they wear it out, they, wear, they have a lot of perm and they wear a lot of white makeup, trying to make themselves look whiter. The reason some of these East African women are making videos about this is because so many black women have made video after video after video about 4C hair and 4B hair and all the problems with 4C hair. And we make it seem like our hair is a big problem. And this came from, you know, the white society. We are trying to overcome the stigma of dark skin and hair and features from white society. We are not trying to deal with it from a standpoint of a Somali or an Ethiopian. But they dip into our business because they are looking for reasons to say, oh, I'm not black, I'm Somali. But they're missing the whole point. Black Americans are the most accomplished in, in the modern age. We are the most accomplished, the most popular, the best known, and the most talked about black people on the planet. And even if the Somalis are not black, so what? Ain't nobody talking about them. And when the world, in the form of a modeling agency, went looking for a Somali, they picked Iman. And Iman says on a regular basis that she is not looked upon as beautiful in Somalia. The implication was that she was too dark and she didn't have good enough hair. And that gives you an idea about where their mindset is. All the world thinks Aman is beautiful, but the Somalis don't because she doesn't look enough like an Arab. I will repeat myself for emphasis. Nobody is more beautiful than a black American woman, whether she has braids, locks, perm, weave, wig, afro, or present girl. Nobody is more beautiful than a black American woman because a black American woman's beauty transcends hair, skin type, or features. Black American women are known all over the world, not only for beauty, but for talent, for intellect, for courage. We are not a one-trick pony. We have a number of things that make us well-rounded world citizens. Black American women are the hottest baddies in the game, hands down. 
but we speak openly about the things that we're concerned about because we are used to doing that. Not realizing that other people are eavesdropping. And for the sake of protecting our image, we have to change strategies. We have to stop talking about the things that we're concerned about and start speaking about our strengths. And one thing we need to get cleared up with people is that we are not a small ethnic group. There are tens of millions of us. I don't know how it is that people think that we are a small group. We are not. There are millions of us. But for the sake of protecting our image, we have to change strategies. We have accomplishments that nobody else can touch. Nobody can touch us when it comes to actual achievement. So she'll go on to something as insignificant as hair and try to make it seem like it's a big deal. So I'm just saying that this is what you come up against when you air your dirty laundry in public. Other people are listening. Everybody wants to find some little bitty thing that they can latch on to to say they're better than somebody else. And this is obviously what this woman did. So that's, that's the problem. Now, I'll end with this. Being a black American has its own unique perks and benefits. And that's shown in every aspect of American life. We look upon ourselves as what we were. But other people look at us as what we are. And what we are is pretty good. Because what other people will run, we will stand and fight. Well, other people would leave their homeland, run into somebody else's country because they can't get anywhere in their own country not e and because they can't get along with each other like the Somalis. We stay here and find a way to work together. So I think that's a strength and we should continue to work our strength and talk about our strengths. There's nothing wrong with our hair and there's nothing wrong with their hair. And it's stupid to make a video trying to make your hair into something more than what it is, which is a covering for your head. So anyway, let me know what you think about the video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.